Good morning, everyone. My name is Adam Siegel, and I would like you all to picture something. Picture a society where collaboration is streamlined, where in school students learn to cooperate with one another and be respectful, to resolve conflict and work together effectively. Think of all the implications that this would insinuate. People's social skills would dramatically increase as the presence of competition would diminish. And as time goes on, there would be no more conflict, there would be no more divorce, there would be no more war, because it had been instilled in students early on that they should get along with each other. Except that's not the world we live in, or at least not the country. And America is, in America, competition has been deeply embedded into how we live today, which is why it's important to know the differences between competition and collaboration, to know which one is truly better for education. The essence of education is to provide the best for students, to allow them to flourish and prepare them for the future. But how can this pr principle be attained when there's a fundamental difference between two widely used education systems, collaboration and competition? Thus, the question needs to be asked which one is more effective. But how can you make that decision, one where the fate of millions of American students' lives hangs in the balance without knowing what both of these entail? According to Robert Axelrod in the book The Complexity of Collaboration, competition is individualistic learning. Students' test scores are what measure their success as they compete with one another for the best grade in teacher recognition. There's a major emphasis on GPA, class rank, and standardized testing. Collaboration-based education, on the other hand, is cooperative learning. Students work together to complete assignments and finish their tasks as they learn social skills in the process. And there is an importance on group activities, total equality, and communication. According to Diana Pounder in the book, in the book, so according to Diana Pounder in the book, Restructuring Schools for Collaboration, group presentations, syncretic discussions, and science experiments are what constitute collaboration. And if you reflect on your own education, you would see that you've had both a mix of competition and collaboration. But that still begs the question which one is more effective. And through, because of the differences between competition and collaboration, you'll see that, that competition reigns supreme. And this all starts with capitalism. According to Justine Hastings, an American economist, advi pol policy advisor, and academic from the National Bureau of Academic, uh, Economic Research, capitalism, the basis of American economy, is built upon a foundation of, a, of competition. In Amer America is competitive in nature, and to succeed in America, you must be competitive. That's, that's why competition helps prepare students for that. In fact, according to a poll by the Pew Research Center, where they asked employers what skills most uh, appeal to them for employees, the top two responses were ones found in competition-based learning. Work ethic and willingness to learn are both intrinsic virtues that can only be taught in competition. You should notice that the third highest ability to get along with others is collaborative, which shows you that while collaboration is important, it should not be the major focus on schools. While high schools vary between competition and collaboration, colleges do not. According to Ibrahim Belisi from the University of Irisi School of Communication, when colleges are viewing applicants, they prefer to see competition-based data that is easy to be compared and quantified, which would be, which would be data like their stu a student's test scores, their transcripts, and their GPAs, which are not often found in collaboration-based education, which are known for their cooperation and communication, not exactly things that can be compared or quantified. The purpose of high school is to, prepare, is to prepare students for college, not be an extension of elementary school, which is why colleges would much rather see a student's GPA and SAT score than know that they spent all of high school talking about their feelings with other classmates. Competition is a big motivator for students in high school. And class rank is one of these biggest motivators. There are some students who are motivated by class rank, so they take higher classes or work harder to do better in their class. According to Nigel Couts, an American educator and psychologist, he says that students are inclined to work better and perform perf to work and perform better when they are given an incentive or a competition is present. Because of this, competition motivates students to work harder and perform well. And when done correctly, comp collaboration can be effective. In fact, in Finland, they use solely collaboration-based models. And they rank near the top in the PISA worldwide exams done by the Organization for Economic Research and Development, which can show that one that collaboration can be effective. But what is more important to notice is that other countries that rank near the top, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, Taiwan, they are all characterized by fierce competition between students. So competition can be just as effective, if not more. The solution is clear. Competition is the way to go. And to do this, schools should be emphasizing test scores and stressing class rank to get students more involved about what they're learning and how, they're truly, how their education is truly going. And schools should also instigate teacher competition to motivate teachers to perform better and will thus better the quality of education that is given to students. And 
The truth is that collaboration is important, so I suggest limited collaborative activities to make sure that students are able to get along with each other and cooperate, but that should not be the central focus of schooling. With any solution comes its limitations. In a limitation of, of this proposed solution, that competition should be based, competition based education should be implemented in every school, is that there might be some students who are discouraged by what truly goes on and, that, and then they become apathetic to the competition because they don't want to compete because they won't do as good. But the truth is that this is unavoidable in life. And the, the, the fact of the matter, the inescapable truth, is that life itself is a competition and you cannot get away from that, which is why we must be prepared for it. What questions do you have? Thank you. Um, was there evidence that you gathered you didn't use, and if so, why? There were evidence, there was particular evidence that I gathered in my, um, when I was doing my research, and it was actually um, from Nigel Counts. He was a psychologist and an educator, and he found statistical data proving that students are more inclined to work harder when, present, when competition is present, but I was struggling to find time in my presentation, which is why I figured that that can be left out, and I figured I'd just include the quote. Okay, and next question. Um, what advice would you have for people that look at this in the future? If anyone was looking at this particular topic in the future, I would advise keeping an open mind and also to make sure you know both sides, competition and collaboration-based education before you want to dive in and pick your uh, solution, which is why I tried to present both what competition and collaboration education entails before I then go on to explain why competition would be more beneficial for students. All right, perfect. Thank you.